delighted to say that Miata Fambele is with us again, Chief Executive of the New Economics Foundation, regular chat uh, about matters economic um, and otherwise. Good afternoon to you, Miata. Good afternoon. Um, I was talking earlier on um, to the Social Market Foundation about uh, the high street and the, I suppose, the plight of the high street at the moment. Um, it, it was because of COVID, but it, the high street was already under pressure, wasn't it, pre-COVID? Yeah, I mean, the story of our declining high streets has been one that's sort of been raging for the last 10 years. Um, and I think what we've seen is uh, the pandemic, both the need to shut down um, shops, but also the fact that it's kind of forced people who weren't necessarily shopping online as much uh, towards online retail, I think is going to have a, a really long lasting effect. So it's sped up the process of the high streets declining. Um, But people are still really fond of their high streets. People really attach value to having that community hub. Mm. So I don't think we can just let it disappear. But I think we need to reimagine what the high street looks like. Yeah, and and it it, it is reimagined all the time, isn't it, really, over periods of time anyway? Yeah, it has been. Um, And, you know, our high streets are constantly changing. um, And I think there'll always be some retail, there'll always be some, you know, hospitality, leisure. Um, But increasingly, I think it has to feel like a community space. And for us to kind of breathe life back into it, I I definitely think it needs more housing uh, when we are struggling for places to build our homes. But in addition to that, you know, I think there's a really, really big place for services that are provided by the public sector to be located in our high streets so people go there feel that it's you know they can get help that they need um at the center but also thinking about flexible spaces you know so increasingly we have these offices that people can use on a short-term or flexible basis and more of those some owned by the private sector some probably owned by the public sector that just create spaces that people can go and work in a far more flexible uh way i think starts to get you to what potential high streets could look like imagining it and achieving it uh, they're very different things aren't they there's a journey to be had there are actions to be made there are decisions to be made political social change has to happen um what, what's your best guess as to when we'll get a sense of whether the high street survives at all even changed well i think in the the next year we'll, we'll, we will feel it because we'll see, you know, we already had in parts of the country, um, and this was a kind of fallout from the financial crisis, even coming out of that, parts of the country, you would just walk down the high streets and shop after shop after shop that was boarded up um, and really struggling to kind of open up again. So that scarring already exists. And I think we will start feeling it when people are walking down their high streets mm. and they are just seeing shop after shop closed down. Which, which um, again, we saw during austerity anyway, didn't we? Yeah. It was already there. And so it, you know, and some places recovered a bit better, but, you know, lots of, you know, I think about countless times that, you know, I've been uh, in town centres, uh, you know, uh, in parts of uh, you know, the northwest or the northeast mm-hmm. and you know parts of Scotland uh, and you kind of compare it to the kind of high streets of London and it is a very, very different feel. So it was already yes. there. Yeah. And then you throw COVID and the impact on our shops and our hospitality sector on top of that um, and the risks that, you know, depending on how a whole set of things are managed, including support that's provided to workers, we could see a lot of shops closing down and you suddenly start see. I think people start seeing and feeling a very, very different type of high street. But, but I, I wonder, I wonder whether uh, the, the local, you know, the very local high streets rather than the city centre high streets um, will thrive as more people work from home. You know, that there's, there's a possibility that that aspect will save uh, some of it at least. Yeah, I mean, so I think one of the interesting things is that people have really placed value on their, you know, their local shops. Um, People want to be able to access things within a 15 minute walk. Mm -hmm. Uh, And so I think there is a, you know, which is why I have hope that we can rebuild something different because, you know, all the polling suggests that, you know, the public love having those community spaces, the things that feel like they're the heart of your village or your town um, or your kind of local neighbourhood. And I don't think that sentiment is going to go away. So I I suspect what we will see and hopefully uh, both kind of action by local authority, planning policy and also the investment that's going in keeps pace with that. What you'll see is that we just start shifting away from, if you like, the old retail outlets um, or the old commercial office outlets to something a bit more flexible that provides some of the services.
services and some of the things that people want and want to use nearby, um, as well as far more kind of flexible premises that means that you can have pop-up shops uh, or you can have, you know, pop-up offices um, and it feels far more fluid, but it, it feels critically heart and soul of the community. And it was interesting, to, to, I, I noted with interest anyway yesterday that um, the delivery firm Hermes, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, is is creating 10,000 jobs because of the demand. I mean, it's astounding. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of hardship, but, you know, the logistic industry has done incredibly well through this crisis. Um, and I think just the volume of online uh, retail and sales and the need for delivery services is quite astounding. Uh, and there's a real juxtaposition when you've got, you know, big, you know, household names, retail outlets, you know, MS, MS Boots, whatever, cutting jobs. And you have Hermes, you know, bringing on mm -hmm. thousands of workers. It, it really gives you a feel for what happening and do you th do you think that there will be uh, that th you know the political response to that is going to be interesting isn't it because 10,000 jobs created great thing 10,000 10, jobs that might mean the end of part of your high street not so great Exactly. Um, but but for me, you know, I, I think a lot of people won't necessarily make the connection to that. The connection I would make is that it's 10,000 jobs great, but 10,000 jobs that are self-employed jobs with no benefits yeah. um, and no protections. And I, and I definitely think, you know, this comes back to the sense that, you know, we've got key workers. You know, one of the things that's come out of this pandemic is the sense that there are people who are vital to our day-to-day -day existence, of which, you know, logistics and delivery services are part of that. And we need to treat them well and we need to pay them well and we need to make sure that, you know, if they need to take a holiday because they're pretty much working every day of the week, they can do with favourable terms and conditions. And I just think it's one of the things that we've got so wrong. Um, and to be fair to Hermes, they did a big uh, deal with the unions that protects some of their workers, but not all of their workers. So I'd want to see 10,000 jobs that are better protected. Yeah, and it was interesting to hear Professor Chris Whitty in front of the Health and Social Care Select Committee yesterday, I don't know whether you saw it, talking about uh, how the, 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 the style of employment, in inverted commas employment, of carers, for example, social carers, um, contributed to the the numbers of people who who got COVID and died. Yeah, I mean, it, it it's sort of shocking but not surprising because you know our, our care sector, which social care workers do the most valuable work um, that ensures that people are looked after um, and can age with dignity. And yet we've treated them in a very, you know, it's these contracts, uh, it's all done on the kind of clock, you know, it's low paid work and you have people churning in and out um, of particular contracts, churning in and out of caring for people, which just seems so counterintuitive for something that's so fundamental. Um, and, you know, one of the one thing that I hope desperately comes out of, you know, the many changes I believe we need to make out of this pandemic is that we really think long and hard about actually the sort of social care system that we want mm -hmm. um, and give it parity with the NHS so that, you know, we get care free at it the feels, point of use. It, it feels a long way away, doesn't it? When you look at the public sector pay rise announcement from yesterday, care is not included because actually they're not mostly anyway public sector workers, are they? No, they're contracted workers, which I think surprises a lot of people mm -hmm. uh, because actually a lot of people imagine that social care is just the same as health care. Yeah. And it's Uniform not. looks a bit nursy. Exactly. They must be public sector workers. Yeah, Exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you know, seven in 10 social care workers earn less than £10 an hour. Uh, you know, a lot of them are in, you know, in and out of uh, contracts. A lot of them are in sort of insecure contracts. So it's a really broken system. Uh, and, you know, my sense is that you, when, when the reckoning comes and we reflect on the things that went well and the many things that went wrong, actually just how poorly treated our social care system is for something that is so vital and we all have a stake in it will have to be one of the things that becomes a political issue. Well, you know, the government talks about it <laughs> if it form. isn't, if it isn't, we're toast. <laughs> As a nation, in my view, well, Miata. Uh, on that cheerful note, I'll finish. Thank you very much indeed. Always a pleasure.